Okay, August 11, meeting of the Urbana Board of Trustees. August, August? Oh, it's you whatever. summertime dreamer. Excuse <laughs> 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 me, April. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it starts with May. Try. Meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Urbana Free Library. Well, come to order. We, can we have the roll call? Yes, sir. Here. Jeff. Yeah. Here. Beth. Here. Chris. Here. Mark. Here. Michael. Here. Bill. Here. And Barbara. Here. Are there additional comments, corrections, or modifications to the agenda that anybody sees? If not, moving along, do I have approval for the agenda? Yes, of course. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. We will have an executive session this evening. <clears throat> uh, public comments. Do we have any public comments? Do you wish to maybe introduce at this time? Is that the best? The new staff. Uh, I, I was going to do it later, but okay. this is fine. This, that's fine. That's we'll not public. <laughs> that's not public. No, she's not public. She's, she's, she's one of us. Now. Presentation. Do we have a presentation of any sort? We do not. We do not. Okay. Action right. items. The board meeting is of March 21. Bills of March 22, payroll of March 31, and bills for April 5. Do I have a motion for approval of the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I thank you. Okay, budget for the 18 budget. Celeste, explain to us what we have well, before us. Just received in front of you. Thank you for your patience. As we had mentioned before, we are working on doing something different so that the information you have as a board is in one place as opposed to something that you approve post audit. And it's just taken some time to figure out where is the right place to look to capture the data in a, in a meta way to give you a big picture. So in this sheet, which is very streamlined, you've got all of our budgets in one place, which is, I think, helpful. The one thing that you're missing which I expect to have next month because Elizabeth Hannon just sent me a file today, yesterday, today, that shows what the dollar amount in the fund balance is expected to be. So right now I show you we expect to have more money in the fund balance. But I will be able to show you what that total dollar amount will be. On the back of this sheet, so this includes the general fund and other funds. On the back of this sheet shows you how I got to the numbers, looking at fiscal 17, year to date, fiscal 16, for the whole year, fiscal 15, looking at the different funds and the dollars that came in and out. The savings lines are, the cash savings lines, the lines that are there, are the places that the money comes into one way or the other. And checks may be written out, but they come out of these lines for to go to check in. So long story short, back then I had a couple of different conversations looking at it from different angles. These are the lines we need to watch to look at the overall budget for these quote unquote other funds. So they vary a lot from year to year, which is probably why the procedure had been in the past to do everything for the year and then prove it afterwards. So I made uh, educated estimates to come up with the numbers that are on the front. And so that's just some background. As we had mentioned before, for the LO5 budget, which is the one in all the color, the multi-page document, this is still broken down line by line. The only change from last month is that in adding all the money to materials, we had increased the um, supplies budget for processing materials. But Don and I talked about it. We decided to add a little bit more money. So we took $400 out of children's books, $600 out of adult books, and put that money into materials processing. So stamp stickers, RFID tags. That is the only change in this document from what you saw last month. And then the last document you've got is a copy of last month's uh, the bank reconciliations, the bank statements came at a, a later point, so Becky's still working on them, so the, the information there is current as of February. But if you were to look at those line numbers on the side, and you compare to that summary sheet, which you don't have to do now, you can see that they line up, so we actually can tell what's in the bank. 
literally based on uh, in relationship to what is coming up there. So everything does match up. Which again, you don't have to do now, but um, that is the most current fake statement sheet that we have. And as soon as it was updated, we'll send it your way. So as Bill is well aware, at the city, the city is looking at budget cuts. The Carl, the judgment on the Carl case from the Supreme Court sent the decision back down to a lower court. So there is no telling when a final decision will be made because it is likely whatever happens at the lowest court could get bumped to the appellate court to the Supreme Court again. So that is likely to be a period of years. So as of just shortly 10 days ago, the city is looking at different decisions about how they're gonna be spending the city's money and how much needs to go into fund balance and the birth funds and all that. So they are actively making decisions that are changing things. So although in our budget, we were requesting $210,000 for HVAC and windows, potentially, part <coughs> windows and windows for that, it is not likely, given this new information, that that would come to the city. I'm leaving it here for the moment because we can ask, but I'm telling you it is not likely that we will get it. So then we would have to have the discussion about where would we, would it come from our fund balance? Would it come from the foundation? Would there be special fundraising? We really need to do the work on the HVAC system because when things break, they are expensive. So that the latest expense when the motor broke and Kathy had the pictures in there, mm -hmm. we don't have the bill yet, but it's likely to be around $5,000. And we anticipate we're spending ten dollars to $15,000 a year on not just maintenance, but on repair. So. I believe, Kathy believes, we need to move ahead and continue to replace the things that are literally breaking down and that will end up saving us money. And we can say that the lower courts of the Carl situation was the one that rejected it before. The reason it went up, right? The city wasn't happy with the response and so they took it to the next court. They appealed the decision, correct? Yeah. yeah. There was, I think there was just some, uh, there were some things the lower court didn't rule on because they ruled on um, it, basically some technical things and the Supreme Court said that the lower court has to rule on these yes. things before they can appeal. They just didn't rule them before we could appeal. They just uh, didn't finish their job basically. So we sent it back down to the lower court to have that finished first and then see if it's still relevant to appeal it. So. Don't we, don't we have a book in this library by Dickens <laughs> on uh, court cases like this? <laughs> Jarndyce <laughs> versus Jarndyce. Jarndyce and Jarndyce. Okay, with that <clears throat> wonderful, glorious picture, do I have a motion to approve the budget as presented at this time? So moved. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Any questions you'd like to ask? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same <clears throat> sign. <clears throat> I thank you. I just wanted to say thank you for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's nice. Yeah. I like these kinds of summaries. Money in, money out, difference. <laughs> okay, we have two memorandums of understanding to uh, vote upon. Uh, one is the matter of staff member being appointed to the city committee, which looks at the insurance we have been neglected to have been placed on that before. So the city and so city attorney and you have agreed on this. Memory the, number one. The city asked the labor attorney actually to develop this okay. and then Jim Simon looked it over as well from a different perspective. And uh, I've been talking to the HR department to say that we would like to have a representative on this committee if possible. And in the negotiations of course it wouldn't make sense that fire and police would be thinking about the library or the other unions. So um, they all said that they would consider it. And so they are, the unions are looking at it as well. But we are hopeful that they will approve it as written. And if you approve it as written, then we can move ahead. If they have changes, of course, we bring the changes back to you. But we, we are excited about the opportunity to be at the table, to contribute to the discussion, not to vote at this time, but to be able to be there at the table. So we're 
approving this pending acceptance by the other bodies. Yes. Is that essentially what you're saying? Okay, good. Yeah. And it's a non-voting membership. <clears throat> All those in favor, please. Oh, yeah, I have a motion to approve. Move. I move. So, second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. The intergovernment um, item with the schools, <clears throat> I think we ought to have a little more explanation. I mean, I read it all, and I understand. It's basically the young people who are covered by the schools, which are outside the city, but it's not necessarily the, well, give, me, give us a little background. Sure. So I included a map in there because it yeah. is a large, there's a large zone that is covered by the school yeah. district that's not covered by the library. And I don't have a number of kids living in different places. But according to state law, libraries can't issue cards unless people are in the taxing district or pay for a card unless there is an intergovernmental agreement. You, the board, are allowed to enter into intergovernmental agreements. So it is our proposal that the school will do certain in kind, provide in kind services to the library, and we will then issue library cards to students who qualify, which is they live outside of our taxing district, and they qualify for free or reduced lunch. And it's a fee waiver, thank you. It's a fee waiver that we're proposing. Did at any time did you try to put a value to these items that you bulleted to see what kind of money we're talking about? If if the, the fact that they're not putting in <clears throat> what their tax base would be in order to get a card, these items that the school board is offering us, I think that what these bullets are, have you kind of put any kind of dollar value on that at all? So we talked about that very issue with, with <coughs> different consultants. Uh, we talked with the city attorney who said in contract law, you don't have to put a value as long as the items being agreed upon uh, provide value to each party mm -hmm. and there's that equity equity piece and talking to other libraries and people concerned with this you don't have to do a one-to-one -one. and it's very difficult to determine mm -hmm. of the number of families that could be impacted so we know how many students it is but if, if a family were to buy a car for example they live in a trailer they would pay $25 for the year but if they have four kids in that household that go to the schools that qualify, they wouldn't pay us $25 per kid, they would pay $25 for the whole family. This is just for the children though, these cards are for the children. So it was very difficult to try to tease that out and give you a number, even for the number of cards we thought would be issued, that is um, something we could back up. And we could have asked the schools, and we talked about, well, what, is, what does it look like if you have a driver and that person comes and comes and stops and picks things up and drops other things. But the map that would have gone into that when it wasn't necessary to have an agreement seemed like not a good use of people's time. Okay, the other item I have is <clears throat> a bulleted item that I think is missing yes. is program promotions, such as Read Across America, Summer Reading Program. Wouldn't the schools be on the hook to help promote those things and they're now not listed in this? They do that anyways. Well, but shouldn't we have that in this, as part of this? <clears throat> I don't know. What? No, I don't know if I would make that part of this document. There, there's, I'm, I'm thinking that's more of a, <coughs> a community building goodwill thing where these are more of a different value. So okay. the, that's promotional, <coughs> you know, if that's a, a nice exchange um, of um, you know, kind of nice marketing type of things, and, and these are a little more specific. I don't think we need to load it up with okay. yeah, other right. things yeah. okay. to make it look better. I, I think this is okay. This I think the biggest value is obviously that children are going to be able to use a library. Well, that, that yes. they haven't been able to. And those who've been on this board know we've talked about yeah. that for years, so that's yes. not. Yeah, this goes back to this is major. Like, I was, I was, I was, I was at the table a few years ago. It's a big growth year. And this is a nice exactly. solution. Yeah, but this just solves a long-standing problem. I think it's terrific. Yeah, grow. Do I have a motion to approve this? So, um, go ahead. Is there a um, so if they so the kids get a card? So that means the whole family has the ability to get a card. Just, just the school children. Just the yeah, school children. Mm -hmm. So how does that work with? Um, 
responsibility for returning the book? Do the, are the parents still responsible to make sure the kids return the book even though they don't have a library card? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. The so, parents have responsibility for the card. So if the parents or any child older than fifth grade wants to get a library card, they would still have... No, this would include all kids in the school district or just... Okay, because you talked about pre-K through fifth grade at one point. That, that's the um, agreement where they're, they're doing the delivery routes is to the K oh, okay. five schools. And there's um, seven schools on that route, including pre-K? If, if I counted correctly. Okay, so that would be done twice a week? Yeah, delivery. There's, six, there's six elementary schools. I mean, there's a, there's a early, 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 early childhood centers. Yeah. Yeah. So there's seven yeah. on the route. And then um, they would also be delivering from those schools to the library once a week. Mm -hmm. would, would that, I guess, okay. I mean, I, I understand the challenge and the um, no need for putting a figure on it, but I think it's a legitimate question just to measure the, the trade off in value because uh, we know pretty much what it would. Well, we don't know right now what it would actually cost to provide the, the um, services, but after the first year, I think we'd get a pretty good idea. So I would suggest tracking it for a year, mm -hmm. and because um, they'll still have to give you an address, you'll know how much they would have had to pay. So there is, it's possible to put a, fi a figure on that. Um, so I would suggest that, and then we can take a look at it again in a year and see if, um, if we feel like it's equitable. Mm -hmm. um, and the, other, the only other thing I thought was the, the services the school district are providing, except for maybe the translation services, are things we could be doing. I wonder if there's anything that the school district could provide, because you know, they obviously can't use the library without us. It would be nice if there were services they could provide that we had, don't have the capability of doing, um, besides maybe the translation services. So I don't know if staff has thought about that. but. Um, I don't know what kind of unique qualifications the school district has to provide services, but that would, I think, enhance the value of this too, is if um, there are things that the school district could do that we just don't have the capability of doing. We had a long list. We talked to staff as well, and some of the things, for example, we thought, well, do they have painters? Maybe they could do some painting for us. Like, what are the hands-on day-to-day things that are, they're not day-to-day. -day. What are the things we know we need, but we don't have access to as easily? And so we had a, a laundry list of things, and some of them they hire out as well, and some things they just weren't able to do. So we are interested in the professional development. We don't do bloodborne pathogen training, but we need to do bloodborne pathogen training, so we're excited to be able to have staff have access to that training, which actually has a, a good benefit for us. We would have to pay for that otherwise. So that is something, and we're very excited about the delivery <coughs> for a number of reasons. Currently, if people, teachers, want to use the teacher hold system, so they call or email and say, I want books on dogs, planets, whatever it is. We'll pick out items for them, and then we put them in a bag, then they come here and check them out. What this will allow us to do is check the items out to the teachers, and then put them on a truck and deliver them to the teacher's classroom. So we anticipate that more teachers are gonna use library materials in their classrooms, because we're gonna make it really easy for them. So we expect to see circulation and awareness of the library to services go up with this delivery system as well as if we are in a position where we could purchase, or a donor could purchase a couple of drop boxes like we have at the high school and the middle school, mm -hmm. then when kids return, want to return books, they have an easier way to get stuff back. Maybe they won't accrue as many fines. Okay, so. here's, here's another example of what yeah. I'm thinking about that just occurred to me because it's been a problem recently. One thing the library does really well is provide community meeting space for free. Um, the school district will offer community meeting space to neighborhood groups and others um, for free, but they have to come up with insurance, and that's a big um, it's a big barrier to a lot of the groups. So if there's any way that we can um, expand our community meeting space in cooperation with the school district, I think that would be a function that the library could take credit for. Um, but if if we could somehow get around that insurance um, option, that would help a lot, or or just I don't know how you do that, but you know, just as an idea, that that's the real need in the community because mm -hmm. they have the distributed meeting spaces where yeah. people really could use it instead of just having this central mm -hmm. meeting space. Mm -hmm. It may be with the, the renovations that they've been doing the last few years. Uh, this is solved; it's no longer a problem. But one of the issues was that you can't close off the building. If you're going to meet in the library, for example, you have access to the whole building. Mm -hmm. 
So that's part of the insurance issue, the security <coughs> issue from the school perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, I know as schools are built, they're built, they're structured more, that you can have separate access to the public spaces and not to the classrooms. But I don't know, I don't know how far along they are on that. I just had a few questions. So, um, um, would this at all affect your per capita? Um, would, it, would it help to make the case in the future? Or, I mean, you can't see any revenue coming from this from the state at any point. No, it increases the number of our non resident cards. These people, uh, we don't have a lot of non resident cards, so I don't think we're going to lose a lot of money on non resident cards. And these are people who are currently mostly not getting the cards. What we're going to do is exactly what you said. We're going to track things, so we're going to see how much money did we not get in non-resident cards because these people, some of these people qualify. And so we can take a look and see what the financial impact was, as well as what are other things, what are other conversations we can have now that we have a tighter relationship with the schools. <coughs> Absolutely. Okay, so um, is this a, a usual sort of arrangement? I mean, do other... Do other libraries do things like this? Pretty common. Yeah. I don't know that as many libraries are in a position where the maps are so different. Mm -hmm. So Tom um, did a bunch of research. The um, reaching across Illinois library system has a template that the, the <coughs> intergovernmental agreement is based off of a template that's on their website. They're encouraging libraries to look into it. Um, I spoke with three different libraries: um, Galesburg and Rochester and Morton, um, who already have similar agreements in place. Um, if not um, an intergovernmental agreement, a memo, understanding, some kind of an agreement with the school district. So it's not, we're not the first ones to have done it. So it just, I've been, um, for IHLS, they've been sort of um, participating in this, um, the state library's initiative to try to, you know, and apparently this is something that they take a pass at and nobody knows how to serve the unserved and then they forget about it for a few years, but this could be a, a very, um, this could serve a lot of those people in a very, you know, I mean, distributed way and stuff. Um, so my other question was, does Champaign do this? Not to my knowledge. I've talked to Donna about it to let her know. We keep in touch with each other about what's happening and I don't know that they have the same border issues that we have. But I did get I did get an inquiry from the um, the head of their adult services department, and I shared with her what information I had. So they 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 may I don't know if they decided to pursue it beyond that point, but yeah. they did ask me for some information. Well, so because I like live in an elementary school and hang out in the library a lot, um, you know they're cutting back on libraries all over the country in the world and things, and so could this be a kind of thing that would permit District 116 to feel that they could go half time with a librarian because mm -hmm. they can, uh, I mean, it's, you're not, mm -hmm. you don't feel mm -hmm. you're going to, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that uh, is right certainly there. not our intention. No, I know it isn't, but I'm just saying that, you know, in the world of diminishing resources, mm -hmm. could this come back to bite you? Mm -hmm. I just still so think you should do it. But, but, and do I also you, think the collections are probably very good. Do you, um, well, it's just I know teachers, they'll say, give me everything I have on the, you know, on uh, Greek civilization, and all of a sudden there's no books in the library on Greek civilization. You know, it's like, um, I could see that happening. But if, if all the schools were counting on your collection of kids' it's books there. on Greek, Greek civilization, Research. you might get a bit funny. Never mind, I just was bringing it up because the librarian said, you know. Um, and then, is there is there a, a way that you normally coordinate with the school libraries? I mean, do you have a meeting with all the librarians? Is there one point person? How do you how do you coordinate with the school library, grammar school? I know that we have relationships with the different school libraries, and I know that they try to have a, a luncheon or a, a <coughs> lunch and potluck once a year, either at the schools or over here. But I don't know all the details. Well, and if, we go to each of the schools every year for summer reading. Right. And it just might be interesting because they all feel kind of lonely and by themselves out there and elementary schools are sort of always feeling second class to the high school and the middle school, you know. Um, but it might be an interesting thing to try and set up something where they would come here and all talk about common problems and things. I mean, it, it, it might be fruitful for both of us. Sure. It's sometimes hard for the librarians to get away, just the right. teachers. It's really hard for them to get out, which is, we got this once a year meeting, which yeah. is nice. 
Okay, sorry, I promised I would, uh, I showed this thing around to For Institute, they suggest that they be, a, the libraries have their own institute. I think the, the thing here is just, in about a year, give Don Owen a call. Let's meet, let's get me for coffee, see if this is, needs, if there's things that need to be changed, things that can be added, things that can be taken out. I mean, it's, a, it's a living document. If it's, if it's not, part of it's not working, it, it won't be that hard to make it work, probably. So. Let me just ask one other thing. So how does this figure with Orchard Downs, et cetera? Is that a separate matter? The university pays replacement taxes, and okay. Orchard Down residents are quali are able to get library cards already. Okay. And so is that a fee, a fee that you get from the university if it's they want to give it to you, or is there an agreement to that effect? There's an agreement through the county that the university pays. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a payment in lieu of taxes or another mechanism, but we do receive taxes from the county that the university pays. The city gets them as well. But I know the schools do get some, but I, from, as far as I can tell, it's not an agreement. It's like the university gives X number of dollars, and if they feel short next year, they don't give that much. Really. So there is an agreement that the university has with the school district, and it's between them. The school district has over the years given 9.4% of what they get from the schools to the library. So okay. part of our budget is $9,400. In years back, it was as high as $35,000, and it's what helped the library open on Sundays. So the money that the schools has received from the university to recognize that, the, for example, the students at Orchard Downs have greater needs with their language learning. So is our allocation a function of the district's allocation from the university? Correct, but we are not mm -hmm. in the university's agreement with the schools. The right. library and the schools have a separate agreement. Okay, and so does the school... Which is separate from this altogether. Okay, do the schools have an agreement that, that as far as you know, Mark, that says, or is it... I don't know anymore. It used to be about $50,000 a year. It's I mean, gone down. Most of which went into <laughs> Sunday hours. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I mean for the schools in general. Do they get they get X number of dollars from the university it or is that changed. just oh, I, it's up to the, it has changed over the yeah. years. Okay. It's changed. Sorry, I'll quit beating it to death, but it's always bothered me that that, yeah. that you know, there's not this sort of written transfer of money. It just varies depending on It was it was written. Uh, it was a written just so this wouldn't lessen that. No, this is this is again. Not separate. now, but I mean down the road, they got to do that disagreement. But let's not cross that. Well, that'll be lessened by other factors. It could be available money. It could be the number of students in Orchard Downs are just diminished. I think it's a fraction of what it used to be yeah. right now. So There's a much we can't justify. There's population there too. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. if you have two Russian speakers versus eight, it's still going to cost you the tutors for, yeah. in Russian. So there's some fits and hard costs in there, but. Uh, I think everybody really does the best they can. So the language in the MOU says fee waivers. Is that the same thing as free and reduced lunches, price lunches? Is that the same people? Yeah, I think I think it's um, that is the terminology that we got from the school district. Okay. That's how they uh, refer, refer, to refer, refer to. Okay. Um, I think you know I've been asking for this for three years, four years, whatever since you've been here um, or before. Um, so I, I'm really happy that this has come about and appreciate all the work on it. And one reason is because um, the surrounding areas are disproportionately poor, disproportionately in that population. I don't remember if that shows in the figures you gave us, but um, I, know, I know like 58% lived in uh, mobile home parks, and almost all of our mo mobile home parks are outside the city except for one, I think. Um, and uh, of the, in the county population, more than half the mobile home residents are in the Urbana School District for the whole county. So. Um, it's just the way it's developed. I don't know if it's because we have a mobile home sales place on North Cunningham or not. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, it, you know, it's great affordable housing, but it really feels bad to have them left out of the yeah. opportunities with the library. So I think it's an equity issue, and I'm really encouraged by, yeah. by this. So hope that lots of people sign up and get cards. Yeah, I think people just don't understand how much different the county is from, from the city, too. It, in my recollection, is the city was about 10 square miles. Uh, the school, the uh, school district was about 45 square miles. It covers a lot of ground. Not a lot of people, but a lot of ground. Pardon. How is this being promoted? Well, 
it isn't yet because it's going to the school board on the 19th and I will go to the meeting and see what questions they have for me as well. And just as a side note, we made it only a period of time through the end of next school year so that we could have these conversations and see if there are other changes as opposed to just roll, a rolling renewal. Potentially after this first iteration and people seem to be happy with it and we know more about it, you might choose to have a, we will keep this going unless we notify each other within 90 days of stopping the agreement, but we were purposeful up front so that again, people felt comfortable that it was um, constrained and can be evaluated clearly and cleanly. So we are gonna work with the schools to get the word out. They're gonna reach out to the parents of the students who qualify and, and other kinds of things like that. But yet they are gonna okay. be part of getting the word out, Chris, because they know who these students are. They're not providing us with a list of names. Yeah. Because of course of privacy, privacy concerns. Yeah. That's why I wondered about how you promote when you're trying to keep it confidential at the same time. But, okay. I don't know where all the credit goes, but I know Don has worked very hard on this, so oh okay. Don worked Thank very you. hard on this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of this oh, agreement, yeah. say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Oh, that's a bad motion. That's a bad motion. Did we need a motion? No, we had a motion, and then I think this was discussion. This was discussion. Okay. Yes. 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 Becky doesn't have any. I, I, I don't think I have five people. Sort of I have the city thing, but I don't have it. Oh. Exactly. I don't. Okay, start over. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Yes, I'd like to watch one other question. <laughs> well, let me say this about Sorry, that. sorry, it just occurred to me. Um, <laughs> you know, you can't. Well, I've won every crowd. <laughs> Come on, I don't do this very often. Usually I just sit here quietly. Um, so, um, you, you were saying it was hard to, you know, pin down the costs or the, you know, what we're getting back and stuff. But what you might look into, and I'm not saying it's enough to, um, you know, to, um, screw up the deal is um, what their non-returned books is, I mean, i.e. somebody borrows a book and they never see it again, what do they have to write off compared to what you have to write off? Because my feeling is, at least at my school, that a lot of books don't come back and um, I would hate to see that disproportionately affect our collection because of elementary school population that tends not to return books whatever I'm just saying it might be interesting to look into what the libraries the school libraries deal with in terms of mm -hmm. un or whatever you call books that never come back mm -hmm. lost lost, lost. 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 <laughs> all right I won't like say anything souls. else I promise <laughs> but I thank you Jack because I think you work with it day in and day out and you know better than we do so mm -hmm. thank you for that remark. yeah well it's good I'm also up at King's school once a week and kids just move and the books go with them to the other grandma or to whatever uncle they're living with and the yeah, books you talk, never come back. Talking it's, about a population a real, a in the issue. trailers, there's yeah. a population, the transient population Absolutely. too, that's fairly yeah. large. So it's a, it's a relevant question. I shouldn't say this, but if, if a few books turn up missing, go with kids, yeah. is a lot worse than oh, yeah, yeah. I hope they are read yeah. often. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Since we're talking, I'd like to um, commend Jeff again for his suggestion about keeping school librarians in the loop as this is being evaluated to see what they're seeing, if they're, they see any changes. In, but you're saying, Dawn, the types of books are very different, the collections are very different. Well, it, you know, they've got their, um, I think the school libraries work closely with the teachers, and so it's very geared towards the curriculum. Where yeah, this is, okay. Um, I think much broader. I think you know, we're, we're supporting that. I, I, yeah. Doubt, but yeah. Um, I think it's probably. Yeah. Sorry. One more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know the controversy recently with Don Owen and him demoting mm -hmm. one of his employees. Well, it was iterated out as a racial thing, but really, what was what was at the heart of it was that sh that the woman who was demoted or whatever moved was a an elementary school principal and represented elementary schools and the elementary schools feel that they are not heard by the administration which is dominated by the high school and the middle school mm -hmm. and I would hate for us to get I mean I, I think it would serve us to make sure that we privilege the elementary school librarians because they feel that the only people that 
that have a voice are the high school librarians, or at least that's one of the, you know, the things they say. So I, that's why I think having a little meeting might not be a bad idea just to yeah. get their voice. Yeah. I think it's more likely that the teachers at the elementary schools are going to be using the teacher holds more than the higher grades. That's my assumption mm -hmm. as well. Right. So I think they will probably at least at first get more play with the younger. But I was surprised that the the outflow from this one thing and it was it wasn't mm -hmm. a racial thing it was a representing elementary schools uh, um, that it get left that people think get uh, forgotten so. okay I promise I will not say anything <laughs> else the next item on our agenda is to <laughs> discuss board of professional development topics you were given a list of those I believe and Let's hear some discussion about it. We tried to have, when there was time on the agenda, at least a topic. I think we've been, been very successful in hitting a number of topics, broad spectrum. There's a few left, but I kind of want to know what your feelings are. Has it helped? Anna? Well, I, I for one found some of the <coughs> discussions quite useful because it focus my mind on issues that I probably would just have let, I don't know, uh, mosey along, you know, not, not paid much attention to. Um, having said that, though, I don't know how best to proceed, and that, that's really the, what you, what you need to have a yeah. discussion about, I think. Yeah. It's been good so far, now what, how do we build on that would be the, we still have some topics in our, I guess they're called handbook, I'm not sure what you call it, fact book, I think it is, <laughs> mm -hmm. that has not What do we need to, to know and be aware of to make us better? Trustees. Trustees. Mm -hmm. I, I thought particularly when Marv, you came back with all of your knowledge about your working area the last few years, that was really cutting edge for us, most of us, we didn't mm -hmm. oh, have that. So. Didn't know. Thank you. Yeah, I, I love to ha see this more kind of uh, professional development topics or topics of interest to us, what's going on in the library world. Um, so we first concentrate on the handbook of how to be a good board member, mm -hmm. and I think yeah. we got through the majority mm -hmm. of the topics, but what you just said there, so then the next level of education is mm -hmm. you know, what's happening professionally yeah. in the library world, things that we would not normally be privy to yeah. in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah. And you know, hot topics, trending topics, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, coming, bringing back the conferences or just as yeah. you read um, or are plugged into discussion groups that we wouldn't be, um, that would be very mm -hmm. useful. Yeah. How would you see us Also, as we start thinking about strategic plan, we need to, yeah. be thinking yeah. beyond our own day-to-day -day, um, knowledge about what goes on in this library because we need to yeah. which is the plan mind, is something to think about the future <coughs> with that in mind it seems to me like we need to get some outside presenter presenters mm -hmm. on, on which subjects well depending on what it would be well that's it trends. specifically strategic plan but I just think we need to be aware of what's going on in the the big wide world and people but like guess, Barbara can help us. We, we've got the library school over here. There are so many experts over there. Mm -hmm. If they'd be willing to give us 15 minutes of their time yeah. once a month, one of them. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe not every month then, but mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. And like Celeste, you go to ILA, maybe other people do too. And we're, we're all, a bunch of us are going to ALA. Yeah. How many? Like a lot, right? A, a bunch of people because it's in Chicago. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so. that is an excellent place to get hot topics, what's going on. So um, we could do that too. Maybe, it, maybe they should just be, or not just, but maybe they should relate to things um, that we're having to do or feel we have to do, but getting a perspective uh, nationally. So I'm interested, mm -hmm. even though I think you think I don't like this, but I really, <laughs> I really am fascinated with maker spaces and where that phenomenon came from and what's happening and it's, it's all over the schools and it's everywhere now. I would, I would be interested in getting 
you know, more knowledge of, of the whole movement and not mm -hmm. just... And what its implications and what, are. Yeah, I mean, like it's exactly. a That's really changing libraries yeah. and things like mm -hmm. that. And um, but I mean, library, the library school certainly yeah. would be able to... Emily Knox is, in, is a professor at the library school and she's a part of the makerspace over at where? It's not hit the one here, but uh, there's a makerspace in the old post office, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And she'd be a great speaker, and then you could talk about what's happening here. And, but Emily knows what's going on nationally, even internationally, I think, with Makerspace. Since most of us are not librarian trained, would that be something you would like to work on to kind of maybe with you and Celeste put together some topics? Sure. And if you even want to well, bring them that. back yeah. to us to rate them, I want this one before that okay, one or something yeah. like that. Yeah, we can come up with some. Deal. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Another good place to look, if you want to, and I know I've mentioned this before, the ALA has the future of the Center for the Future of Libraries, and so they put out a weekly or so bulletin of things to scan in news articles that show trends. But they've also got a page that shows the hot trends they're looking at. So we can bring to you next month again a reminder of what ALA has said future library trends are that are important, and add that into the mix yeah. of the kinds of things we could speak about. I think we also want to talk about ethics because that's the kind of thing you need to talk about. The auditors will be happy that we talk about ethics of the board and of the staff. And, mm -hmm. um, as well as I know one topic that you brought up, Barbara, now that Rachel's on board, is how this library is serving our immigrant community, yes. mm -hmm. the number of resources. Yeah. And that's one thing we talked about so that when you're, it's one part of your professional development as well. Yeah. Yes. No per end to them. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to strategic planning too. Time, time to head up when we start to actively begin that next the process next time, but no sense to do it a year or two ahead of time. But. I'm sorry, I missed that. Let's stay out, stay out in front of when we're going to do it. Yeah. If we're, we're going to start a strategic plan next year, then we should be having some sort of discussion on this now. If it's going to be two years from now, let's wait a couple of years. Okay. That make sense? Yep. Okay. I'm going to leave that in her card because she's going to be drawing up her goals. Right, and I provided some. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, report from the friends. Oh, we have good report. Ooh. And um, I think I have it complete. <laughs> All those the pages. book sale. Yes, I'm going, I'm going to spend the next three hours <laughs> reading all of this. No, the book sale was quite successful. They took in $5,010 and 75 cents. <laughs> uh, 400 of that will go to the um, ads on the backs of the MTD buses for the summer mm, reading program. Nice. And of the rest, approximately $4,500, 60% will go to adult and teen books to the library for the purchase of, I should, should make a complete sentence, 30% for children's books and 10% to the archives. 57 boxes of books went to Better World and then the next sale is August 24 to 28 coinciding with the Sweet Corn Festival and the friends will not meet until August. That's my report. Do you get a report from the Better World as to what kind of return we get on any of those books? Periodic, do they send you? A ch they, they do it when they've sold them, I think. So maybe we might get $10 one month. And quarterly. quarterly. I believe it's a quarterly, and it's in the, we receive it and deposit it. So it's in the detailed trial. I can, I can pull you in years worth if you want to know. What kind of money do we get? That's 60 average. bucks a quarter. <laughs> 50, 60 bucks. Again, you're right, it depends on what's selling. That was not part of our discussion. Okay. Um, Anna, how does the um, income from the book sale compare to past book sales? This was not uh, one of the more stellar, but it was successful. Mm -hmm. I think the one in August will be more successful um, because of the Sweet Corn Festival, okay. and the banner will be out on the, on the race street side and, and that always attracts people um, but we'll see you never know 
Is it, how does it, is there any trend or oh, ribbon yes. to these? Oh yes, I didn't or? bring that with me. Oh, we okay. have lots of reports and we have a, um, I, I could bring it to Rotary and show you. Oh, okay. Because there was a nice chart. I'm what just curious if year that we sweet corn had is, that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If sweet corn is always the best or whether a different, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Um, because of our Chinook collection, that was kind of a peak. Um, oh, nice, yeah. So that changed that a little okay. bit, probably. So I thought Thursday nights was slower than usual. I don't know. I don't think we sold as much on Thursday mm -hmm. night. Have all of you, Jeff? Sorry. Um, so how do, we, how do we sit in terms of book donations? Do we get more books than most libraries? Do we, do we feel like we're doing better? And you don't know? I don't. Donations for the book sale or donations? No, so here's, here's what I'm thinking. Like you were talking about different topics. So we have this display upstairs of all these library books and I took half of them the other night. Um, but one of them, or a couple of them, were about these little libraries, the little things outside mm -hmm. of people's homes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which are going yeah. you know, mm -hmm. across the country. But I would think in a town like ours, there's a lot of people, and I know because I go to a lot of the state sales, a lot of people have libraries in their basements. Mm -hmm. And it seems like kind of sad that they're just sitting there and nobody knows they're there and they can't, you know, and these little boxes help get them out on the street perhaps. But I just wondered if our neighborhood or our community is more saturated with books than other neighborhoods. Once in a while you do not want those little boxes from the damp <laughs> basements to be brought to the... No, I know. Because they're full of bugs. And <laughs> Let's not go there because... Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. a sort subject. No, but I mean, it, it, it always kind of struck me, like, you know, if everybody were to return all the books from the U of I library, the Don't library would, wouldn't know what to do with them all. <laughs> yes. But I mean, it's... Uh, them all. <laughs> I just wondered if that was reflected in us getting a lot more books than most libraries get in donations, that's all. We don't track the number of books that come in, nor do other libraries. Okay. So that's, I, you can't really compare. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, they don't, it's not a number that we track. Never mind. <laughs> I wish I could tell you the answer, but that okay. And one thing that helps here is like my husband had a ton of books and he's got a bag back and he came in and somebody from the staff came and helped him. Mm -hmm. yes. and yeah. I don't give it to the U of I because there's nowhere to drop them off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's convenient. Yeah. And I'm not going to walk six blocks when yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. I'm counting on a federal um, tax rebate for <laughs> insulation at some point. <laughs> <laughs> That's my justification for why my basement has little bugs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy to drop them off. Yes, it is. Right. Do the books that go in our library, free library across the street, come from the sale? But they come from the friends. The friends will pull the aside friends. some books they think would be popular for the community, and they put them on a shelf down here, and okay. then there's a volunteer who walks them out. We're also seeing that neighbors are bringing books and taking books, though. So it's a are give they? a book, take a book system. It's, it's happening. I've seen it signed, so it's fairly empty. Mm -hmm. And I suppose then we rush some more books out there when it looks a little empty? We do. Staff check it when they go to the parking lot. Or, again, someone will come and drop some off themselves. I've seen both things happen. Foundation meeting next week. Yes. Nothing new to report. I don't think we're still negotiating. Heartland. Um, things continue apace. Uh, they are still looking at six hundred thousand for this year, and everybody seems to be sort of thinking they're going to get a big chunk of money. And I'm like thinking, okay, but it's getting near the end of the year and mm -hmm. our reserves are to the point where if we don't get that money, we will have about a year's worth of funding left just mm -hmm. from the reserves. So, mm -hmm. wow. um, but it's, it, everybody seems to be thinking, oh, it'll come through here and we'll, we'll make it. Yeah. So um, they continue to work on advocacy, but it's such a fuzzy topic and um, it's kind of hard to advocate for this system and and anyway, we're still working through that, and the uh, Champagne building got a new roof, and it's all fine, and so they won't be moving out of Champagne in the near future. They've invested too much money in it. Okay. And moving along to the administrative reports. Celeste? I have a couple things to bring to your attention. I sent the job description for the associate director to the city and they turned it around quickly with some great suggestions. So I expect within the next couple days, a couple of few days, 
to have that posted, and then we will move on with the development director next. So we're getting those two positions out there. We've got um, different positions being filled. I know it's so exciting. <coughs> so we've got more circulation staff being hired. We had a couple people leave, so that the normal, the normal things are going on. And Rachel started. So let me introduce you to Rachel Fuller. Hi everyone, like she said, my name is Rachel Fuller. I am so excited to be a part of the Urbana Free Library team. Um, I am coming to you from Rochester Public Library and Rochester School District, and I'm excited to be here. Um, I look forward in particular to the strategic planning process um, and some of the new initiatives that we are working on in AYM. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Yes. Yeah, welcome. Glad to have you. I've never, never met her in, perfect, but in person, but I've seen her face on these teleconferences for the last couple of years. <laughs> yes, that's true. So you've been a school librarian before? Or? Uh, yes, and my most uh, recent great. position was Director of Library and Media Services. I oversaw five Good. school libraries at Rochester. Wonderful. I think I like that. Thank you. And you just let us go on and on and on and on. <laughs> well, I, I Especially say, when uh, Since I was both at the Rochester Public and at the school district, mm -hmm. um, I did have a unique opportunity to work with the director of the Rochester Public Library on the intergovernmental agreement. So that's Great. a project that that's very much excites me. Very good. Um, and that was very well received at Rochester, both by parents and by students alike, as well as the community at large, even if they didn't have individuals who benefited directly from it, the community as a whole did. Good. Um, that makes me think, once this agreement is yeah. in place, a letter to the editor Yes. yes, I yes. think would be yes. in order to let the public know. Yes, thank you. That's, that's, but it should be in a, a joint with the yeah, school. Yeah, well, whoever, right? Yeah. But I think that would be. Yeah. Can't yeah. expect the Gazette to do an article, but everybody reads the letters to the editor. Obits first. Make sure your name isn't there, <laughs> and then the letters to the editor. So let's, let's I, I don't make think sure that gets done. I don't think it's unrealistic to ask the News Gazette if they'd like to do Maybe. an article. They, Maybe. There's slow news days, and yeah, yeah. They, 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 yeah. I always had his little blurb of different topics. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. yeah, both are worth a try. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. If I could add, I went to the News Gazette's editorial board meeting that they have every month. They drew my name out of the hat, and uh -huh. I was happy to go and uh, really bang the drum for libraries. And I believe that they will take articles on libraries and what we're doing. Um, or they're going to hear from me because. <laughs> well, but they, they said, we don't hear from the community as much as we'd like to. They've got this new mm -hmm. thing about um, better community communication with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's the only thing that'll sell papers. They're absolutely Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. Yep. So mm -hmm. we got to try more. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, figure out a way to get sports in the library involved. I know. Yeah, that I know. <laughs> yeah whole section. I I like the the library. Library. Right. Sports days. It's like they, yeah. they keep a list of the the clicks at least on their online and it's sports get sure. because all these people are clicking on statistics and things I, I, I my wife I think might have gone to the same meeting oh really and oh, it, it just seems like to, to to make their decisions based on the clicks on their online mm -hmm. thing is like a little misguided I think mm -hmm. Barb will spend their morning hour calling the news gazette every day <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kathy, would you like to update us on the was facilities? Celeste, was Celeste I have a few yeah, things I'm to share. Oh, okay. <laughs> One of them was in the board packet, um, and uh, Celeste also mentioned is that the motor for the East Air Handler was delivered without incident. I know Mark was concerned yeah, yeah, yeah. that it would <laughs> drop, but it did not. <laughs> <laughs> Great what, pictures. Love those pictures. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it was installed and operating within 24 hours, so it was very nice that. Um, they were able to get that done so quickly. Uh, today, uh, well, let me start with last month. Last month it was mentioned in the, in the board packet that the library had been invited and has accepted to be part of the RFP process for the city's um, guaranteed energy savings project. And today they did a walkthrough, the city of uh, um, Scott Tess um, and Vince Gustafson from the city uh, brought about 15, 16 um, people that were four, represented four different companies to come through and do a walkthrough of the library. So they were on the roof, they were in the boiler room, they were opening every cabinet that they could to kind of look at the facilities. And they had lots of questions. 
So, um, do they consider us fertile ground? Will, will there be a report from them, or uh, this is a long process? This is, uh, I think they have until I want to say, oh gosh, it was. It was much longer than usual. It's almost three months for the RFP process themselves, and they're making it very competitive. So um, it was it was a very unique process, I will tell you that, because they were just sucking information and trying to even get information out of me, which I could, of course, not give them all that information. So. Um, did they make any loud exclamations about, I can't believe air is leaking out here or anything? No, that, no that they was... did not. They did not. They seemed very entranced by the windows. Okay. They asked a lot of questions because we started in that room. And, yeah. and the obvious question was, is, does it get cold in here? Uh -huh. That type of thing. And they were also very entranced by the, uh, the bug zapper, <laughs> the bed bug zapper, because we had to pass through the furnace room in order to get to that. So. But they really were, um, and the, the Cleaver Brooks, Brooks Boiler, which is being replaced next month, of course, that is unique because it's so old. <laughs> so some of them are like, I've never seen one of them. <laughs> so uh, it was, it was fun. So how does this relate to your comment about the city probably wouldn't be coming forth with the money that they suggest that they might have for our windows needs so the city's figuring out which of these companies will be a company that they'll work with to then evaluate the city in the library this is an initial look at who's going to put together the rfp and get the bid to be the, the guys and the gals to do it so then we have to then hire them to do the work which is evaluate and then we would. But they're figuring that if they don't expect the costs on any of them to be low enough that they could afford to, yeah. to, to help, us. help us. What happens is that in theory, if you replace the windows, you save enough money to pay for the windows in the um, heating and cooling costs that you would have incurred. Mm. So it's, it's a plan that in theory pays for itself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know all the financing mechanisms. I guess what I'm asking is these okay. two are not related necessarily. They certainly would have looked at the furnace as part of the, the boiler as part of the equation, except it's being replaced now okay. because of efficiency and such. And it, I don't think it will impact the city's decision to pay or not pay for the air handler replacement or the chiller, sorry. Okay. Um, are we through with this one? I just want to make sure before I move on that anybody have any more questions about that process. Um, the boiler project is on target to begin next month. Um, and just so you're aware is that um, the, you had approved the replacement of the chiller at the March board meeting, but the library has asked Henneman to pause moving forward with the RFP process on that until we know more about the situation with the budget. So, um, well, kind of with Jeff's question, doesn't the ESCO or the, where, where are they calling it? There? Yeah, it's a guaranteed energy savings okay. project. I've heard it. And ESCO, similar thing. GESC is what the initials were on the city's invitation to me, but they also are using the term uh, ESCO as okay. well on the RFP. So, so, won't that? Relate to the chiller replacement. I mean, if we're if we're if the city's going to go through with that, shouldn't that be done to the ESCO rather than? I, you isn't know, that what you were asking? Kind of overlapping with that one because if we we've already decided, remember, we're running at fifty percent here with the with the chiller, and if we find out about how the budget is going to be this year. We have only that window of November till March in order to replace that. I'm not quite sure that that will overlap well with the with the final report from the ESCO. ESCO. Okay. So, may cut it close. They certainly did look at it. I will say that. The word guaranteed always jumps off the page when I when I see it. Okay. Does it have any meaning here other than the, the, the company's name? What's here with being guaranteed? Well, from my understanding is, is, as Celeste said, is that you're talking about the ESCOs? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking mm -hmm. about? 
is they go ahead and they recommend projects that they think. They, they recommend projects. And the projects that they potentially <coughs> recommend are ones that they believe, as Celeste said, will pay back over a certain amount of time. Well, is it the quickest payback? or Because some paybacks are 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I, you know, I, we figured, <coughs> depending on interest rates and mm -hmm. so on, that paybacks in the 10-ish year range, or 50, maybe even 15 year range, are actually saving money. You know, it oh, gets yeah. longer than that. Yeah. I'm concerned about the, the university has done some projects over the years that had a 50 year payback too. So. Yeah, well then that's actually costing you some money. So yeah, yeah, it was the right thing to do. It still be a good thing to do. Yeah, but, uh, yeah it, was a, it was a good thing to do, but it, yeah. it wasn't going to be a money saver. Yeah. Oh. And then the last thing is that um, Alpha Control, you had approved that project, I think, back in the fall, and they were scheduled to begin in January, but other things happened with the company that prevented them from coming to us because ours was still in operation, and I think there were other companies that actually had failed systems, so they took a priority. But Alpha Control was in the library last week to do backup settings for the replacement of the HVAC control system, and the project, according to them, has a target completion time of May 15th. Mm -hmm. okay. Stick around. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. Can Thank you. Yes. I would like to just add, we, we went along uh, past the director's report, and I just wanted to commend Celeste for being, um, to joining the advisory committee. For that's the exactly what center. I wanted to say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I think that's really important for us to be at the table. My middle son is on the YM board, so I've been following this with a lot of interest, and I think this center yes. is a really, really big deal for this community. Yes. I don't think people quite understand it. To see that you're going to be on that advisory committee is super. I was thrilled to see that. And one of the questions, one of the comments I made at the News Gazette um, forum was, um, that they had done that wonderful report on the Welcome Center, and it said report number one, and I said, I want report number two to be what the local libraries are doing. So, <laughs> thank you. <All> right. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay, the next three items on, I'm gonna kind of wrap into one. First of all, Mark, myself, and Jane are up for reappointment. I have no feel that Diane will not Reappoint, so we're all interested in re maintaining. But the next part of that is I've asked Jeff and Bill to serve as a nominating committee, and hopefully that the reappointments would not affect. <laughs> we don't think they will, but you never know. Diane's a new new man, mm -hmm. but all of you know Diane sat on this board like mm -hmm. half city council have. <laughs> and so I think it's been very helpful to have city council that yes. still are on, yeah. that have been on the board, that are still on city council. That way. Yes. Okay. Um, do I have a motion? Anything else right now? We'll have, come back after a closed session. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? So moved. Is there a second to that? I'll oh, second. Jane, 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 Jane did second. James, oh, oh Jane second. Okay. A roll call? Yes. 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 Mark? Yes. Yes. I don't think that there will necessarily be anything to come back as far as people, public wanting to wait around, but. Okay. 